Okay, so this one is finding the vertex, intercepts, and axis of symmetry of the graph of the parabola. So we need to know what these things mean. Intercepts are your x-intercepts and your y-intercepts, right? So where does it cross the x-axis? Where does it cross the y-axis? Um, your vertex is going to be the peak or the valley, okay? And so you need to have the coordinates of that peak or that value. The axis of symmetry is a line. It's always going to be a vertical line because it's symmetric across that vertical line equal to whatever the x coordinate is here of your vertex. That's what's going to go there on the other side of that equation. Okay, so let's look at this um, thing, this parabola here. It says, does the parabola open upward, which is like a U, or does it open downward like a hill? Okay. It actually opens upward. So here you would select upward. Then it says, find the equation of the axis of symmetry. Well, this is the middle of the parabola. So the axis of symmetry that they're talking about is this invisible line that I've drawn in. What is the equation of that invisible line? It's x equals whatever this x value is, which is negative two. On the x-intercepts, notice that the graph does not touch the x-axis, so there are none, no x-intercepts. No However, it does touch the y-axis right here, which is 0, 4. And then find the coordinates of the vertex. This little valley here is the coordinates of the vertex, and the x-coordinate is negative 2, and the y-coordinate is 1. Okay. Similarly, we're going to follow these same directions or same questions for this image. So does the graph open upward or downward? This one looks like a hill, so it's downward. Axis of symmetry, this is the little peak here. So this is going to be my axis of symmetry, which is the equation x equals negative 2 again. And then x -ups, I do touch the x-axis right here. The coordinates of that are negative 2 and 0. And for my y-intercept, um, I do touch the y-axis right there, and the coordinates there are 0 and negative 1. Um, find the coordinates of the vertex. This point also happens to be the vertex, and the coordinates of that point are negative 2, comma 0. So it says, finding the intercepts and the vertex of a parabola. See, this is a little bit more difficult, and excuse my mess over here. I think one of the kids got a hold of my notebook and got spaghetti or something all over it. I try to clean it up as much as possible, but we can still work with it. So it says, find the x-intercepts and vertex of the parabola, but no image is given. And you're not required to draw it. There is a way to find these informations. Okay, to find the x-intercepts, all you do is let y equal to zero and solve. That'll give you the x-coordinates where you touch the x-axis. For the vertex, there is a formula to find the vertex. What you do is you have to first find the x value of the vertex, and the formula for that is negative b over 2a. Granted that your um, parabola is written in this form, so if your parabola is written in that form, this is the formula you use to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. To find y-coordinate of the vertex, you have to plug in that value into your function or into your equation. Okay. So let's see here what we get. Um, for the x-intercepts, we're going to say let y equal 0 and then solve this equation. This is actually x plus 6 times x plus 6, which is x plus 6 squared. If I take the square root on both sides, I get 0 equal to x plus 6, which is just 0. There's no such thing as plus or minus 0. And if I minus 6 on both sides, I end up with negative 6. So x coordinate is negative 6. And remember, you set y to 0 from the very beginning, so the y coordinate is 0. Now when it comes to finding the vertex, you're going to use that formula, x equals negative b over 2a. So here, my a is 1, 
B is positive 12 and my C is a positive 36. And I don't need C, I just need B and A. So negative 12 over two times one is negative 12 over two, which is negative six. So I know the X coordinate of my vertex, it's negative six. To find the Y coordinate of my vertex, I need to plug in that value for X into the original equation. And I get zero coincidentally. So my Y coordinate is zero. So this is the X intercept and this also happens to be the vertex. They're not always the exact same value. It's just coincidence that they are in this particular problem. Okay. So let's try that same thing over here. For the x-intercept, we have to make y equal to zero. And remember when you're factoring, if the first term is negative, you are forced to factor out that negative, which means these will change signs. And then if I continue factoring, negative one cannot ex equal zero but x minus six could and x plus four could. This would equal zero, x equals positive six, and this would equal zero if x equaled negative four. So I have two x-intercepts. I have x equals a six, and again, y was set to zero at the very beginning, and I have negative four comma zero. Now for the vertex, we have to do x equals negative b, and b in this case is positive two, over two times a, which in this case is negative one. We end up with negative two over negative two, which is a positive one. If we want the y coordinate, we have to plug in positive one into the original equation. So negative comes down, one squared is one times one, which is one. Here we get two, here we get 24. And so the y value we end up with here is 25. So the coordinates of the vertex are one for x and 25 for y. Notice that they are not the same, right? This one did come out to be different. So sometimes they might coincidentally be the same. Most of the times they're not. Last um, example for uh, module 21. So it says find the maximum or minimum of a quadratic function. And they give us the function here. It says, does the function have a minimum or maximum value? What is the function's minimum or maximum value? And then where does the minimum or maximum value occur? And then they have a second example with the same three questions, okay? So remember, how do you determine if it's a minimum or a maximum? Recall, if it opens upward, right, it's gotta have a minimum. If it opens downward, it's gonna have a maximum. What makes it do that? It opens upward if your A value is positive. Greater than zero means positive. And it opens downward if your A value is negative or less than zero. So that's what we're gonna be looking at. And if you look at that here, your A is negative two, which means it's negative. So then we have a graph that's going to be opening downward, which means we're going to have a maximum. It says, what is the function's minimum or maximum value? And then where does the minimum or maximum value occur? We know it's not a minimum, it's a maximum. Well, in order to answer B, you actually have to answer C first, okay? Because remember the methods of finding that peak, that vertex. You know the formula to find the X, but you can't find Y until you know what X is. So we do have to do this first. B is a positive 12 and A is a negative two. So we get negative 12 over negative four, which actually yields a positive three. So I can answer part C first. If I wanna know the answer to part B, I have to plug that in. Remember, F of X is just fancy notation for the letter Y. So I'm gonna plug in my three and I get negative two times nine plus 36 minus 16, negative 18 plus 36 minus 16, 
and I get two. So now I know that the maximum value is two, okay? Similarly, we're gonna do the same steps, but for the next function, okay? So for part A, look at your A value, right? This one is positive, which means it will open upward, which means we're actually gonna have a minimum. And in order for me to answer B, I actually have to figure out C first. So I'm gonna do X equals negative, B in this case is a negative 24, two times A in this case is a three. So I end up with positive 24 over six, which gives me a positive four. So I can answer C first. Then to figure out what B is, I'm gonna plug in four into my function. Well, not that function, this function. So I get three times 16 minus 24 times four. So we get three times 16 is 48 minus 96 plus 50. And we coincidentally again get two, okay? So this max or minimum value, Y value is two. Okay, and that's the end of module 21. It's actually the end of all the 320 concepts. So after you've finished module 21, your objective is to start studying the review for the final exam so that you can then take the final exam as soon as possible. You wanna move on to 1414 as soon as you can so that way you have enough time to finish all of the 1414 material before the end of the semester.